all right folks welcome back to another raid shadow legends video and just a quick follow-up from the previous video we did the other day which was on the the new fusion the fox hunter dude um, i'm a little late to the party again i've been quite busy as usual but um i wanted to do a quick update on the the champion that's supposed to go with them the valentine's fusion type champion so that's going to be the fusion the fox hunter and this is the yumeko guy or girl sorry that um, we were talking about the other day that is supposed to combine with this champion so I wanted to just quickly go through this champion because she is absolutely insane one of the best champions I've seen since Siffy was released and that's how highly I'm, I'm thinking of her this is I mean the last time I felt like a champion was as good as this was when I read Siffy's kit um, now even when Siffy and Rotos got released a lot of people were unsure if Rotos would be any good. I think if you go back to the video I made at the time, I actually thought Rotos would be good, but I didn't think maybe quite as good as he would be. But I did say Siffy would be probably the best champion in the game. And even to this day, she's still regarded as probably the best, if not one of the best in the game. And I do think this um, Yumeko girl here has the ability to surpass that or definitely match it because her kit is that good. So this is well worth looking at guys if you haven't seen her. So she's got an A1 guys. Attacks one enemy twice, each hit steals 7.5% of the target's turn meter. If this champion has 50% HP or more, each hit then um, heals this champion by 30% of the damage if she has less than 50% HP. So it's a pretty useful, um, got some damage buffs on here. Incidentally, she's got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 books, which is a very big... I mean, I don't know what the books have been like recently because I've been away from the game, but there was a while when it was looking at like, you know, 15, 16 books, so... 10 doesn't seem too bad, that's going back to what it should be. So all in all, a decent A1, um, can steal turn meter or heal herself, it's pretty damn good. The A2 here, attacks one enemy with an 80%, 100% when booked, chance of placing a hex debuff for 3 turns, but then she's got a passive effect, whenever an enemy tries to place debuffs on either this champion or an ally, has a 55% chance of transferring those debuffs to a random enemy under hex debuff, placed by this champion so the hex has to be placed by her and that 55 will get boosted to 75 percent after here um this happens before any debuffs are placed on the initial target only has a 30 percent chance against bosses so i'm going to read the, the rest in a second but wow that is actually pretty insane um 75 percent chance just to have any debuffs that are coming on to her or any of your allies that's the thing that gets me if it was just her it'd be good but it says or an ally so none of your allies can be debuffed well it's a 75 percent chance so the odds are you're in favor but you know anything coming at them they've really got to think okay i've not only have i only got a 25 percent chance of landing this you know providing they pass the accuracy and resistance test as well so they've got that to get through at first then if they get through that it's a 25 percent chance to land with a 75 percent chance not only to not land but to get chucked back at the guy who's trying to place the debuff so that is extremely powerful it does rely on her landing the hex don't get me wrong but that is a very good ability also whenever someone fills the turn meter of an enemy under a hex debuff placed by this champion this champion's turn meter will be filled in instead only available when the fox hunter is on the same team now having the fox hunter on the same team as her is going to be nuts i mean the the synergy between the two is one of the best i've seen in any of the sort of dual champions that's ever been released in raid so i think if fox hunter is pretty good which we're going to discuss in a second then I th I, you're really going to have to try and use him as a, as a nuker because it's just too much synergy not to like the fact that she'll be able to take and steal the turn meter of anyone getting turn meter fills on the team with the hexes is just crazy um really really crazy and then she's able to cycle around her abilities now this is on a three turn cooldown as well so yeah it's, it's it's really strong the a3 here now this is where it gets a little bit crazy decreases the cooldowns of all ally skills by three turns and increases the cooldowns of all enemy skills by three turns will not decrease the cooldowns of this champion skills so seven turn cooldown five turn cooldown when booked this skill the first part of it is kaimar skill it's exactly the same except he just resets them all but to be honest three turns is pretty much going to reset every skill in the game anyway that you're using at the top level with with the exception of a few but also it's got warlord skill at the back of it increases the cooldown of all enemy skills by three turns which is crazy and again that's going to get around things like block debuffs and all those sort of abilities so absolutely insane this is like warlord and kaimar who already are like two of the most broken abilities in the game 
for Arena especially. This is, again, Fox Hunter I mentioned before is an Arena champ. This is definitely an Arena champion, although there's a hell of a lot of stuff you can do with her in PvE as well, don't get me wrong. Um, absolutely nuts ability. Let's have a look at the passive too. Places a perfect veil on this champion for two turns at the start of each round. Fantastic. This champion is immune to all debuffs if they are under a veil or perfect veil buff. Um, <laughs> that's, that's insane. Whenever a veil or perfect veil buff is placed on an enemy, has a 75% chance of stealing the buff. This happens before it's placed again on the initial target, only available when Karuto Fox Hunters in the same team. So if you're fighting a Duchess team, they try to put a veil on. Oh, no, I'm going to steal that. I will have that. Um, and whenever she is under a veil or perfect veil, she's immune to everything. Yeah, there's just so much going on in this kit. I mean, even the A1, it is a really strong A1, but these three abilities here are just nuts. And the, the stuff you're getting with Fox Hunter is really quite strong. You know, steel and turn meter and steel and veils. Increase accuracy in all battles by 60 as well. Yeah, yeah really, really strong champion. Um, now, the Fox Hunter, is he... There is other legendaries here, guys, by the way. I'm not going to go through them all. There's loads of people done videos on that. Let's just have a little look and see. That's the Fox Hunter there. There's like, yeah, tons of stuff here. All the rares and everything. And I think the epic for the fusions in here. But we'll have a little look at the Fox Hunter again just to remind ourselves. So the reasons that he would be used with Yumeko is grants an extra turn and resets the cooldown of this skill if Yumeko's in the same team which is basically attacking an enemy and grants an extra turn. So the one thing we can see here is that you do get a 20% bonus here. So it's not massive, but a 20% damage bonus. I haven't actually checked to see his multipliers yet, but I know his attack's pretty big. It's about 1,550, I believe. So he could potentially hit very hard, this guy. Um, we've got the, the A3 here as well. This debuff cannot be resisted if you make us in the same team, which is, again, crazy. One thing to notice here, it doesn't have a cooldown reduction, so that's on a four turn cooldown. Um, that might make a bit, of, a bit of an issue. It would be nice to see this on a three turn cooldown, because then you could have just kept them locked out properly. I mean, I know it's for two turns, but because he's going to be a little bit slower if you want him to hit hard, four turn cooldown might make it a bit of an issue. But I still think, you know, you're getting a 20% damage thing, you're getting 10 and 10, so it's a 100% chance of placing it. Um, and the last one was whenever Yumeko dies, instantly grants the turn of this champion and resets all his skills. So there's just so much synergy between these two. I really have to run it. I mean, this is going to be the first fusion I've gone for for a while. By the way, completely free to play now. Um, so I'm going to be going free to play for this champion. Um, so yeah, interesting. Very interesting kit. But Yumeko really... Um, Oh, check this guy. This guy looks pretty cool. I'm not going to go through his kit, but if you haven't already, check this guy out. He looks pretty badass. I quite like his... Uh, I don't know if he's going to be amazing, but I, I like his... Um, I like the look of him. He looks really cool. But Yumeko definitely would like this champion. The problem, again, with Raid is I'm going free to play. And the likelihood of me getting Yumeko is slim to none, let's be brutally honest, because chances are they'll maybe do, like, best case scenario is a 10x and a 2x at the same time. That's the absolute best case scenario because they're not going to do her in a fusion as well or like a guaranteed champion i mean if they did a guaranteed champion for her i think it might be a tad broken because like then the whole meta would probably just be using her um so yeah really the best option we'll ever get for it is a 2x and 10x and with the amount of voids that are in the game now the likelihood still is very low so you'd have to be spending a ton of money because free to play for me i'm going to be lucky if i get sort of 10 15 a month so there's pretty much a zero chance of me getting her, but you never know. I might get lucky, but we uh, we will watch all the top players now get Yumeko and just destroy people because I think she looks absolutely nuts. I mean, the applications here in PvE as well, there's just there's so much cool stuff going on. Um, yeah, really excited to see what she can do. Very excited. The last thing I want to touch on in this video as well is the classic arena upgrade. So they've actually put this upgrade live now. This was a couple of days ago. Like I say, I'm late again as usual to the party. Um, the platinum tier has been increased to 500 from 300, which is, yeah, it's better. I don't think it's enough again, but it's definitely better than it was. Um, and increased these Magisteel ingots and platinum tier battle rewards. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's good. Um, I still think the arena needs a complete overhaul, but it's definitely a welcome change. Adding a new tier though, that's a good change. I think I've talked about that for 
for ages for this game you know for like a year and a half and that's them finally just put one in so it'll occupy between 3500 and 3800 um i did read something today that the rewards are actually pretty damn good for it so that's cool to see I haven't really checked that out yet because i didn't play the arena reset again this week so again arena reset for me is on a monday morning at like eight o'clock when my kids are going to school and i'm working so there's pretty much no chance just now of me actually doing arena resets anyway even if i wanted to another thing that raid really really needs to change is staggering those resets we've said that for so long um, it's just such a bizarre thing to do because they know how popular the reset is just have it at different times or have two resets or have regional resets um, there's a lot of things they can do to make it more competitive and more fun um, furthermore yeah that's all that stuff changes will affect immediately so they are changing arena that's good i would love to see like i say the arena reset change so that's the main one i want to see what do you guys think of the changes do you think the classic arena changes are enough do you think they need more how do you feel about real-time pvp just let me know in the comments about all of this and yeah that's me covered pretty much everything so i think the events for this fusion shall be coming out here we go 16 hours we're going to get a summon rush and that will be the first event so i'm going to be opening 896 mystery shards for my summon rush so i'm going to get 896 points unless i get a miracle and get some uh yeah because I've, i don't have any gems left my last uh summoning session my good friend decided to let me blow all of my last gems on um, all my ancient shards so i ain't got nothing um so yeah we shall see it's gonna be i'll, I'll definitely be able to do it though i mean I'll, i've got loads of energy i've got plenty of silver so i'll be able to get points from all the other places it's just gonna be the summon rushes where i'm gonna struggle because i don't have the the shards to do it um but yeah that's it guys and one last thing i wanted to say just before the video ends actually was I'm contemplating, like I mentioned in the last few videos, of doing obviously a new free to play series. Now, we did the free to play series, which was really fun. I think a lot of people seemed to enjoy it. Um, we got to a certain point though, and then I got into plat, and then it was kind of like, hmm, yeah, what do we do now? It wasn't as fun. So I wanted to just start a new one, but I don't know. Part of me didn't really want to start just doing a brand new free to play series because it's been done so much now, and I was trying to think of something different. So Number one, I'd be open to any suggestions you guys have for a new fleet free to play type series. It maybe could be not even like there's people that have done low spender series now as well. I'm not, yeah, I'm just trying to think of something completely different. So I'm going to throw my idea out there, but I'm not opposed to any ideas that the community have that they want to see. So just leave in the comments below if there's anything you would like to see me do. But the idea I had was just a simple case of, because I don't think many people have done this. I've got like, there's plenty of people with better accounts than me now but for a time i had a really good account and i was able to compete at the sort of top level so i think i've still got a pretty damn good account if we have a look at it we've got yeah there's a ton of <laughs> there's a ton of good stuff in here plenty of decent dupes we've got hedges we've got you know plus two duchess plus four big on <laughs> plus two mountain king i've got a lot of good stuff as you can see and then we've got the vault as well and um, you know the funny thing is guys I can't even remember how to get into the vault it's been that long We've got a bunch of stuff in the vault here as well as you can see so we do have a good account um, so I was thinking of a sort of series maybe called like free to play at the top so get a top level account top-ish level account like this and then just completely switch to free to play now I know a lot of people have done that but I'll actually stick to it and just literally never spend a penny not have any of the gem packs absolutely nothing i'll run down all of the silver that i've gained i'll just upgrade all of my artifacts or something like that um use up all this energy in this upcoming event and then just totally play free to play and let's see because i think one of the things people think about when they play raid is okay i'll spend a bit of money or any gacha for instance they'll spend some money get some good champs get all this kind of stuff and then they can stop spending money and enjoy the game and compete so maybe that's what i should try and do I should try and make a video to see if that's possible or are these games rigged to just keep you spending money which i think they are by the way keep you spending money to compete at the top because they're always bringing out these new things but but we will try we'll see if we can actually compete top level try and compete in platinum try doing the hydra eventually try and doing i mean we know we can do clan boss guys that's easy enough um just try to do all the content keep up with all the top players whilst not spending any money so that's kind of my idea but again it might be a stupid idea if you guys think it is please leave in the comments below and that's it guys hope you have a great day peace